Hi, this is Negan Zahauer from SMGER, and today we're going to be looking at the juror misconduct issues in the case of Halverson versus White, which is from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. Here we're going to be talking about juror misconduct claims that are procedurally defaulted and whether the defendant can show a good excuse for that procedural default. Now here the defendant was convicted in 1983. He first raised the issue of juror misconduct over 20 years later in 2004 in a motion that was supported by the affidavit of his investigator who interviewed juror Garlington and argued that Garlington incorporated the Bible into the penalty and sentencing phases of deliberations. The district court denied his petition for habeas corpus relief and the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit affirmed that decision. Let's go back to the facts. Here, Halverson was convicted in 1983. In 1985, the district court gave him leave to interview jurors who were willing to discuss the case and two agreed. The district court found that Halverson could have discovered any potential misconduct then as to Garlington. The court noted that Garlington was clear about his religious convictions during voir dire. He explained that he was a pastor and quoted biblical passages in responses to questions about his views on the death penalty. At the end of the trial, with the court's permission, he led the courtroom in, in prayer, thanking God for coming into their midst and guiding them all. The, U the U.S. Court of Appeals also stated that the defendant brought his 2004 motion under the wrong statute and added that Kentucky courts routinely deny review of juror misconduct claims incorrectly brought under Civil Rule 60.02 rather than Criminal Rule 11.42. Considering the fact that he interviewed two jurors in 1985 and could have learned of any alleged juror misconduct, his 2004 motion was also brought under the wrong statute and his request for an evidentiary hearing was denied. Additionally, he pursued habeas relief, but it was determined that his claim was procedurally defaulted. Here, the defendant did not provide any excuse for why it took him over 20 years to bring his juror misconduct claim. Since his claim was procedurally defaulted, the U.S. Court of Appeals did not address the merits of the case. This concludes our analysis of the juror misconduct issues in this case. For more information about other juror misconduct cases, our CLE courses, and other updates, please click on our website. And remember, don't let juror misconduct taint your next verdict. I'm Negan Zahauer from SMJuror. Thanks for watching and see you next time.